Today we're going to be grafting two horrible running boards together to make one mediocre running board for the 1948 GMC. Here's the original running board from the truck. You can see it has some sideswipe damage and all through here it is completely rusted away. All that is garbage. And it's also not great back here. It's heavily pitted, but uh, there aren't any holes yet. Uh, so that's going to be good enough for what we're going for. It's kind of a shame because if you look on the bottom, it's all like brand new under here. All this corrosion here is of course the result of uh, improper storage by the previous owner. I'm not going to mention any names, but uh, what's done is done. So we're just going to try to make the best of it here. Over here we have our donor running board, which uh, isn't much better. It's got a uh, pretty heavy uh, collision damage here. Looks like uh, somebody tried picking it up with a forklift, most likely. And uh, this did come off a half ton, but somebody at some point torched the back off to put a, like a flat deck on or something. So that's uh, all not very good. Running boards are readily available for this truck brand new. So we're not uh, gonna be making a perfect running board. Basically the plan is just to very, very crudely rough out the damage on this one and then literally weld it on and whatever it is, is what it's gonna be. I just don't want any holes because if there's holes, it's no longer a functional running board and the whole truck is pretty beat up. So we're just uh, trying to make it usable as it is. So I'm not spending any more time on this than uh, what's absolutely necessary for it. A crude repair so I wasn't even going to film any of this but then I thought well if somebody has a rare truck where running boards aren't available you could do something similar if you took your time and you could get good results in this case like I said we're just gonna hammer through this and make it uh, it's gonna be rough and ugly but it's not gonna have holes in it when we're done so let's uh, get started here
Uh, we got this thing all uh, tack welded together here. I just wanted to point out something here of great importance. If you look here, you can see there's a great deal of misalignment here. Where this is a lot more uh, squared off and this is more rounded off. And the reason for that is, is that this running board came off a 1953 truck. And this is a 1948 back section. So by the time they got around to 1953, the uh, dies were a lot more worn out. So the stamping is not the same. And if you look at the, uh, the actual beads as well, you can see these are a lot more squared off. These are more rounded off. Now, what are we gonna do about this horrible misalignment, you might ask? Well, I'm going to do absolutely nothing about it because to quote the late, great Clark Gable, Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. But uh, there are some things that uh, we could potentially do here. Uh, one of those is if you are gonna be doing something like this, you wanna make sure you're getting uh, running boards from the same year of truck and from the same manufacturing plant. This is not just a uh, GM thing. This would happen to any old truck or any old car. Uh, as the uh, production goes on, the dies are going to get worn out and, you know, as they get closer to the last year, the manufacturers are going to get too concerned about if the dies are getting sloppy and they're coming out with a new model in a couple of years, they're just going to keep running it until there's absolutely nothing left of it. So, uh, there's that. Or, uh, if you had a pole max, you could uh, make up some dies and you could uh, munch this thing through the pole max to either uh, sharpen this up or soften this out. And uh, you can do that for this as well. But let's be honest here, if you have a pull max, it means you made the right decisions in life and you're not uh, working on your hands and knees in a dirty garage, uh, trying to weld a uh, rusty running board to a bent up running board with a MIG welder. So, uh, you know, doesn't apply. Um, the other thing is, uh, I guess uh, you could uh, slice through here and uh, round that out and then re-weld it all and maybe uh, these I mean if you uh, body worked it out a little bit and then you just absolutely laced this whole thing with like polyester high build and then you went back uh, and you sanded and blocked it all and kept blocking it and sanding it you'd eventually be able to fake these out but uh, again how much time are you uh, willing to invest in a running board that you can buy brand new for $300 so and what we're doing here uh, for a beater, this is gonna be fine. I'm not uh, losing any sleep over that. It's uh, better than a bunch of holes where your feet go. Um, but uh, if you were, again, uh, doing this on something you cared about, uh, pretty important to find running boards from the same year uh, vehicle. Like I said, as the production goes on, the dies get more worn out and uh, it's just a universal problem. So. That's enough of that. We're gonna weld this up and we're gonna grind it and then it's gonna be good enough.
Well, that's quite a convoluted mess we've created, but uh, ain't got no holes no more, so I'd say a uh, total success story there. Uh, you know, uh, it's welded up, and you see our misalignment is still there. Fortunately, that is uh, kind of underneath the uh, cab where that joint is, so it is what it is. Don't really care. Uh, if you're noticing that uh, on this truck, you know, you're getting way too fussy. Because uh, the rest of the truck uh, is uh, much worse than that little uh, blotch there. So uh, there you go. We've created a running board out of a uh, rusty running board and a smashed up running board. And uh, that's going to fit the bill just fine for what we're going for. And uh, I wasn't even going to record this. But I figured uh, this is something where... Uh, if you got a truck where running boards aren't available and you got some time on your hands, you could do the same thing. But uh, this is one of those projects where it's not necessarily skill. It's uh, you get out of it exactly what you put in. I didn't put any time or effort into this and so I got uh, garbage. But if you were willing to uh, spend the time, you had uh, matching running board chunks off the same year vehicle and you spent your time getting all this lined up perfectly and you took your time welding it, you saw I blasted through that pretty quick. I didn't do any hammer and dolly work, I didn't do anything, I just welded it, ground it, that's it, done. But uh, if you took your time on that, uh, you could uh, get a pretty presentable looking running board uh, if you were so inclined. But uh, you can buy running boards for these trucks brand new for, uh, I think, $400 Canadian, which is about uh, $5 US. So not really worth the time, but uh, for what this truck is, this is perfect for it because the rest of the truck isn't very good. So why spend a bunch of money on fancy running boards when uh, you can put in a scabby one and uh, it'll uh, serve its purpose. You can put your foot down here now and uh, you won't fall through anymore. So that's good. And uh, that's really all we were going for. So. That is uh, that. Another mediocre repair for the books. Before we go here, I just wanted to uh, mention that we have decided to abandon the idea of using the YouTube Shorts uh, program there. I'm sure that's to the relief of all of you, including myself. I uh, posted one and I immediately knew that it was uh, just the wrong thing to do. It, uh, like I said before, I'm, I was never a fan of them to begin with and I thought I'd experiment with it, but uh, I just, I can't bring myself to do it. It's just a terrible thing. And now that I've tried it, I have confirmed that it is indeed a terrible thing. And I have no doubt that if I started posting them on a regular basis, I would get more subscribers out of it. But I feel like the people who watch those don't have a very long attention span. So do I want a bunch of people with a one minute to, to 15 second attention span or do I want people who are actually going to sit through and watch my videos start to finish? Well, uh, from what I've seen in my YouTube adventure so far, uh, it's much more important to have people watching your videos start to finish than it is to have them click on it and then click off or not watch them at all. So. I am uh, happy with the rate of growth as it grows and uh, we're going to continue through this YouTube journey the hard way by making full length feature films rather than go for the low hanging fruit which uh, doesn't uh, actually benefit anyone in the long run. I never liked the whole idea of the shorts thing on YouTube and uh, I don't feel like that's uh, what YouTube should be about, but uh, I guess I'm not the CEO, so I don't really have much say there, but uh, it's not something I think is very good. And so we're not uh, we're not gonna participate in any of that. I'm sure you're all uh, very relieved, as am I. I had uh, a few of them uh, put together to upload, uh, because I mean, it takes a uh, very minimal effort to put them together and to upload them. But uh, I mean, as with everything, you get out of it what you put in, and so you put in minimal effort like that, and I don't feel like uh, it should be rewarded for it. And as we found out, uh, even though they are monetized now, you only get about uh, six cents per thousand views. So even if you were getting like a million views, it's still not worth uh, selling out for. 
anyways thanks again to everyone for watching thanks for liking and commenting and uh, sharing videos and all that thanks to all people sending uh, super thanks and uh, once again a uh, huge shout out to all of our patrons who have uh, really been keeping the show on the air this whole time so and we'll see you again when I've got uh, another video lined up I guess